My name is Tom Flaz, I'm a doctor, and now I work in medical technology. But today I want to talk about the five things that I've learned throughout my career that have helped me get to where I've got to, and will hopefully help you get to where you want to get to. You'll have goals, you'll have aspirations. And so these are the things that I've learned along my journey. So the first thing that I learned pretty early on was never be afraid to ask for help. And I'll be completely frank with you, when I started medical school, I failed the first two classes that I took. Flat out. Embryology, molecules and cells, completely failed. And I was very, very scared that I was going to be a failure, and that I wasn't going to get through med school. And it was really through that fear that I thought, okay, I need help. And I asked for a tutor, and I was really, really lucky that they had free tutoring. And I swallowed my pride, because you get into med school, you think, oh, I'm smart. Here I was with a tutor for hours on end every single day. And then four years later, I ended up being the graduation speaker of my graduation class. And it's just so important. I feel like as kids, we're so eager to ask for help. I think we need to get back into that kid's mindset, swallow our pride, and ask for help. That makes, I think, the best leaders. The second thing is hustle. So, no one gets to where they want to get to by sitting on the sofa uh, and scrolling through Instagram. You've got to hustle. Like, we all have to work hard. I know it sounds really obvious, but we have to remind ourselves of that, I think, every single day. And, you know, I was lucky enough to go and work at the Dr. Oz show, uh, where I was offered a job as a producer from a medical researcher, uh, and then I had to learn all the things that you learn about producing, which usually takes about six years to get to, as I was going, in a matter of, in a matter of weeks. And it was the hard, probably the hardest working time of my life. But sometimes you just got to work your fingers to the bone and realize that there is like the end of the tunnel. You will get there. Put in the hard work now, and you will reap the rewards in many, many years to come. And luckily, I got incredibly lucky in that job. Uh, a couple of years later, I won my first Emmy, and then I won my second Emmy year after that. And it, was, it wasn't, you know, I, I wasn't like, oh, I'm doing this to win an Emmy, but it was those hard days that I was working that enabled me to get to that point. And I think it's really important that we, we think about those hard days, and when we're having those hard days, we like, we know that it's going to be okay in the future. So that was the second thing. The third thing is, one of the kids here said it, so I want to give a shout out to one of the kids, is talk to strangers. You know, I went swimming the other day in the hotel pool that uh, we kind of put up in, and there were some kids from two different families, and immediately they started talking to each other, and then they got in the pool and they started playing together. Wouldn't that be wonderful if adults did that? If we all just like hung out and introduced ourselves to each other? I think the world would be a much better place. And you never know what it might lead to. You might meet your future wife, you might meet your future husband, you might meet your future best friend, you might meet your future employer. I was lucky enough to meet my future employer through talking to a lady when I was on vacation in a supermarket in Costa Rica. She was checking out, she had her kids running around the supermarket. I said something like, your kids are really sweet. Long story short, she also lives in New York. She ended up inviting me to this party that she had. And I met her brother, who is the co-founder of a company called BioDigital. And we are a 3D interactive uh, human visualization platform, a little bit like Google Earth or Google Maps for the human body. Didn't realize they were looking for a medical director, but they were, and I ended up getting a job with them. Who just said to a lady in a supermarket, I think you'll get to really sweet. So talk to strangers is number three. Number four, if in doubt, go for it. I really think that, you know, I never thought that I was going to get into a half decent university. I never thought I was going to get into med school. I never thought I was going to go and work as a producer. I never thought I was going to win any Emmys. But if you don't put yourself out there, you will never know. So you've got to go for it. If you're like, oh, I'm not sure, just do it. Just do it. I've never regretted anything that I've done. I've only regretted things that I haven't tried. So if in doubt, do it. And the final thing is, and this is going to may sound strange if you're looking to be a leader, if you're looking to be really successful, we often do put ourselves first. And that is important in some instances, but it's also important to put others first. That's the fifth thing. Put others first. So I want to give you an example of this. I was in Central Park a few years ago about to start a race. I'm a triathlete, and triathletes were notoriously selfish. We train by ourselves as individuals. We want to win as individuals. It's not a team sport. And I was on the start line for this race for the two athletes which was run by the run. And I was like a bullet in a loaded gun, ready to go off, training buttons. I wanted to get on the podium. I wanted to win this thing. 
And last minute, someone said, can someone guide an Achilles athlete? This was literally just before the starting gun went off. And I'd never heard of the term Achilles athlete. And so, but no one had volunteered. So I said to the lady, what's an Achilles athlete? And she said, oh, it's a blind athlete. I, just think, I thought to myself, I, I could not believe no one had volunteered to guide a blind athlete. So I said, yeah, sure, bring the guy over. Because I thought to myself, you know, if I race, maybe I've got a chance of getting on the podium. Um, but if I guide, if I, do, you know, if I do that, this guy's not going to race at all, and he's blind. So they bring over this six foot six guy called Francesco Manusano, totally blind, as in if you look, if you look to the sun, there's no idea if it's shining. The starting one's already gone. He's teaching you how to guide him while we're racing. And you have a tether, it's a bit like a shoelace, a loop around my hand, a foot and a half between us, and a loop around his hand, and we're running. And he's a great runner. I, I get him you know, to the turnaround point, we get back, he teaches me incredibly well. I get him to the bike transition zone. A lot, another guy last minute volunteered to, to be his cycling guide. So when you're blind, you do a tandem cycle. Blind guy at the back, and hide at the front. And so I handed him off to this guy, and then I do my own bike. I picked him up for the second half of the run. We do the second half of the run, we get in. He ends up winning his entire age group against able bodied people as well. And this guy's blind. Blind, and he's out there doing triathlon. He went to university. He has a job, and that's why I thought, what excuse you know, do I have? Does anyone have? He has such a disability, and he absolutely nailed it. And that race, and I should add, you asked me to go on the podium with him at the end, which was not once I did get to go on the podium as well. But I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that that race was so much more meaningful than any race that I have done myself, than any race that I go on the podium myself. It just felt so much more enriching, and it has really enriched my life. And now I guide blind triathletes in New York. And I'm uh, one of the down to the final five guide candidates to go to the Tokyo 2021 Paralympics for the Irish national team. And that brings me so much meaning in my life. And so I encourage you to do stuff for other people, bring you incredible meaning and make you more successful meaning. Lastly, I, I love quotes, so I, want, I just want to end with a quote. It's my favorite quote, and I have tried, I've done a forensic search to find out who came up with this quote? Some people say it was Theodore Roosevelt, some people say uh, from various different writers. But if anyone can tell me who actually originally came up with this, I would love it. Comparison is the thief of joy. I think it's so important today to remember that. We have so many ways to compare ourselves to other people these days. We've got Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, all of these various different means by which we can look at other people and think, oh, they're having such a great life. It really is just a curated version of their life. You can only know how happy you are internally. So remember that. It's your own internal happiness which is so important. So to conclude, ask for help, hustle, talk to strangers, put others first, and if in doubt, go for it.